Good morning. Good morning. And thank you very much. It has been, uh, it's a pleasure for me being here. I, fortunately, I didn't know your society, and for me, it has been a pleasure to know the Society for Risk Analysis that, and to collaborate with you in this interdisciplinary uh, framework. And uh, my thanks to Jose, to propose my name, and you for the organization of this event and your team. And uh, my, my speech will be focused, we mainly focused on hydrometeorological risk. Uh, I, but uh, I will mix some, there are some parts of my conference that are, are related with uh, questions that we have dealt with them yesterday. Well, natural risks have always existed, but the population ability to live with them uh, has changed all of the time. This is an example, this is an example of Italy, uh, they all, everybody know, but this is the old city of the mountain uh, in the past, in the 17th century. This is the present city now in Italy that is usually affected by flash floods because they, the stream crosses the, the river. No? Then uh, we need to, to, to improve uh, how to cope with uh, this kind of natural risk, having in, taken into account the increase of population, human um, rights. What is Ugline? Uh, Ugline is, I will start uh, speaking more or less about the, uh, the theoretical introduction about uh, hydrometeorological hazards and risks. Uh, the examples that I will use will be focused on fluids, uh, starting from evidence about impacts and trends, and uh, speaking also to a lot of scenarios. Uh, we, my presentation will be followed by the analysis of philosophy, strategies, and tactics when we cope with disaster resolution. And we'll end with uh, the, the analysis of the potential strategies and mind concepts. And finally, with less story. Then we can start, this is the old definition of this, the world. Uh, which is composed by hazard and vulnerability. In some places, vulnerability includes exposure. In other places, exposure is outside. You know. But uh, hazard, hazard is mainly uh, related with three cases: the frequency of the event, the, the intensity of the event, and the extension of the event. And there are different types of hazards. Uh, for us, there are natural hazards, they are a combination of different natural hazards. A natural hazard for us, for instance, they are from meteorology. A natural will be, for instance, a thunderstorm. A combination of different natural hazards will be, for instance, a, a some occasion, a flood, a forest fire. A social natural hazards will be related also uh, with the impact of society, or, uh, for instance, from the United Nations Droughts are social natural hazards and technological hazards. This is for us the, the usual kind that the other ones from when we speak about in my context. Because I have seen here that you are including another kind of, of, of hazard. No? And the, the second part will be related with the vulnerability. The vulnerability following the United Nations are the conditions uh, determined by physical, society, economical, and environmental uh, factors, uh, which increase the susceptibility of individual and community as a subsistence to impact hazards. And vulnerability can be, with this definition, uh, can, we can consider that vulnerability includes exposure, sensitivity, and resilience. Uh, along the time, the uh, the factors that are included here have changed a lot. When I have started to work with natural hazards, they include only the, uh, for instance, only the uh, land uses, uh, the kind of catchment, and, but along the time, uh, prevention measures, plans, warning systems, and so on, are, have been included. There are different dimensions that the social, economical, physical, institutional, cultural, and environmental. And I have seen that each community from natural science or from social science cope with uh, vulnerability from different points of view. Then, 
if we consider this, when we focus on hydrometeorological hazard, the expression is from the United Nations that is there. Uh, we can see, for instance, like hydrometeorological hazards, we can see uh, floods and wind, thunderstorms, tornadoes, hail. They are different kinds. In reality, we can uh, create a typology of hydrometeorological hazards following I insist, following the definition of United Nations, because there are another definitions, and hydrometeorological hazards consider any hazard that is related with atmospheric, biological, or oceanographic nature. And it's possible to distinguish, for me, in between a hazard that are related only with atmospheric factors, hazards that are related with atmospheric factors and other drivers, and hazards that are related with other drivers, but in which the atmosphere, the meteorology, is important. Between the, the first ones, we can find, for instance, directly uh, heat waves, for instance. Heavy rainfalls, high storms, thunderstorms, wind storms. That's only meteorological hazards. We cannot do anything to change them. And they can be related with climate change or not, but we cannot do anything, because they are only atmospheric ones. The second one include the uh, interaction between different hazards like coastal surges with oceanography, major tsunamis. In Spain, this is an, a, a new name, I don't know if you know, it's new in the bibliography, and uh, it's provided by uh, a phenomenon that is produced, for instance, in Balearic Islands, that is known as Rizalas. They mean that they are the change in the level of the sea that are not related with earthquakes, are related with atmospheric changes, pressure. Okay? And uh, recently in bibliography, they have introduced it, and they are known as metasunamis. Uh, coastal erosion, floods, flash floods, droughts, landslides, with landslides, um, uh, yes, and hell, avalanche, there are other ones that will be included here. In this case, we can, the human uh, can act to increase, to decrease, because there are other factors that we can change. For instance, the use of soil, uh, for instance, the water management, and so on. And the third one are other kind of hazards that are not produced by atmospheric conditions or hydrometeorological conditions, but in which the atmospheric conditions are important like, for instance, uh, epidemics, the transport of toxic substance and volcanic eruption material. They are geophysical hazards, but the atmospheric conditions can affect this kind of hazard. There are the different types of hydrometeorological hazards, and we can see that in the world, they produce the major effects. This is a picture from the uh, United Nations, uh, this is a human impact by disaster types between uh, 2005 and 2014. And we can see here in the, in the in your right, affected people, and in left, this. And it's possible to see that the first one, flat, is the hazard that produced the major uh, quantity of affected people. It's the most important in the world. That's after this, we have also droughts. Uh, droughts is important uh, to have in mind that they not include, in some occasions, uh, structural droughts that are associated to some climates, for instance, in Africa. They are not included here. They are sold only when they are recognized as extreme droughts. But we have floods, drought, storms, droughts, last lights, wind fires, extreme temperature, much more women, uh, well, this is dry, this is without cloth and without rifle, but we have also without with rifle. And they are obviously uh, the hazards that produce the greatest number of uh, casualties, usually are earthquake and tsunamis. For instance, if this, um, this, uh, this picture will be referred to 2004, I think that the catastrophe in NASA was in 2004, 
this number will be also increased. But if we consider the vision of all the disasters, hydrometeorological disasters are the more important in the world. Well, what is the information that we have at present about the devolution? This is uh, uh, the number of disasters related with climate in the world for this period, 1918-2011. And we can see that the most important again are floods with a strong increase, followed by storms. And there are not so much change, not so much change, because it's only until two. 2011, it's not until today, and for this period, we have droughts and stream temperature. <coughs> it's important to say that when uh, a United Nations prepare this kind of, of graph, they include only major events that are reported. It's to say, for instance, in our case, Mediterranean floods, my Mediterranean floods, floods are never included here. Mm -hmm. They are only major events. And they are another question that we'll, be, we'll speak uh, afterwards is about the increase. Because this increase can be related with climate, this increase can be related with the increase of exposure, or it can be only related with the recording information, because we have more data now than in the past. This is a difficulty. And it's for this reason that the EPCC considers that it's very difficult to assess that uh, natural risks are increasing, or hydrometeorological risks are increasing with climatic change, because there are a lot of factors that are involved. But, well, uh, but what is the risk perception? The risk perception can be affected by, instance, by mass media. And this, these two graphs <coughs> are for uh, is, uh, are based in the collection of more than 14,000 news in Catalonia, in the northeastern part of Spain. And is the idea, what is what's the objective of this? Uh, because people think that the major risk in the area is related with the information that they reside. They reside. And as in Spain that we know that in our region, uh, in the Levanto region, the most important risks are floods because they are the more frequent. The, in the total, they produce the major economic damage and also uh, the major frequency of victims. Uh, it's possible to see that the, the major number of news is this. And this kind of news, this is, in Qatar, this is new related to all the news in the newspaper about uh, agrometeorological risks and four types. And this is only for Catalonia. And we can see, that, and this is for floods. And, and we can see that in spite that the frequency of floods is considerably uh, above or superior to uh, forest fires, the number of news is major in this case. And also, not only the major, uh, the number of news, but also the coverage for each event. This means that for one, each event of related with a flood, they are more or less. 65.7 news for each event, and in number four, it means that more than six news. What is the explanation? The explanation is that forest fires are produced in summer, usually, and there are no news in summer. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, uh, journalists devote more uh, interest in uh, forest fires. And it can change the perception, because previously we have made uh, questionnaire to people, and people thought that forest fires were more important. Were more important. But not. Uh, it's only a perception. The other thing is about return period. Our return period, uh, it is usually when, when yesterday, mainly in our session with Elena, uh, with the law about the, or with Jose Maria, about the use of the return period to characterize uh, important <coughs> events, so the use of a retro period of 500 years. In Spain, it's a legal question. If a uh, natural hazard has a retro period above 500 years, it means that uh, there's no responsibility. 
but it's less than <laughs> responsibility. But we have found analyzing uh, different, well, analyzing uh, all the flood events recorded in the region in Catalonia for a long period, that we can have catastrophic events that means uh, with destruction of bridges or houses with retrospectives that are less than 500 years. This is the kind of, of uh, figure shows. This is a retro period, the average retro period for events uh, that are uh, produce some damage, not very big. We are not speaking about casualties because these criteria are also used in historical information and casualties have not improved. We are speaking only about damages, about the description of damages. And you, we can see that uh, the retro periods for events that we consider uh, ordinary, extraordinary, so it's with not very important descriptions or catastrophic movies can have retrospectives periods less, obviously less to 40 years. And only very big events, like the 1982, that was a major event by extension in the past century, have retro periods near 500 years. In the other case, we can have important damage with less than that. And this for me, this is important because in some cases you think, okay, a uh, retro period of 10 years for more people is not bad. It's, it's usual, it's frequent, they are not damaged. We are habituated to have this, but no, it's not common. <coughs> Following this, uh, the other perception is about the self uh, protection. And this is a student that has been published recently, this month of August. And uh, it's a student that analyzes the victims. Uh, I have this is a Portuguese person here. Ah, uh, he's here, okay. The, this is a colleague that has participated in this study. Uh, it's a study in which uh, the analysis of the casualties of for these regions for this period, 1980 to 2018. There are more than 100,000 plots, is to say, with casualties, with more than, or with near uh, 2,500 fatalities. And what was uh, the distribution, what was the reason of all these fatalities? If you see, this is an, uh, the distribution of the different countries. This is Portugal, it's here. Obviously, this kind of figures can change if we have a major event during the period. And in this case, when the major events have been produced has been in Turkey, but there are also, it's also read that the uh, preparedness and warning systems in Turkey are low than in the other regions. And you can see, uh, this is the case of uh, Catalonia, Balearic Islands, Turkey, France, Portugal, Greece, Turkey, Italy, Israel, and Sensebourg. And uh, what is the, the first, obviously, uh, the highest numbers is in Turkey, and uh, usually they are men. There are more cases in what my men are affected than women. Uh, the, age, the age of people, majority of them have ages included between 30 and 65 years. And uh, we will analyze the risk. The, and the major part of the victims, uh, when we know the origin of the victims, the major part of this were residents. It means that they are not the justification of they don't know the characteristics of the place. And some of them are disabled people. That you will think they, in this case, they need another treatment. And what the, 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 the mind causes? The mind causes is usually they are, victims are in dark conditions, usually in you know, the afternoon or the night. Uh, and the typical situation is in the road. They are more frequently affected in the road. This is a, in the place we can see the men and women, and in the case, in most cases, and the maximum is uh, when they die is a road, but women, there are a lot, also a lot of women that died at home in this case. Uh, because they have not the ability to, uh, to be evacuated in time. 
how they were facilitated. Uh, what is the situation? They were dredged, they usually they would have been dredged by water and mud, uh, with the exception of old people. Uh, when, you speak, when we speak about old people, usually they die at home because they cannot be evacuated. They usually were traveling to going to home, to work, uh, with the exception of uh, uh, old people. Usually they die in a car and the hazard we walk in houses. If we see here, uh, usually uh, there are more women that die when they try to move to a certain place than men. There are more women. And in the case, uh, the, the typical situation, uh, in, in most cases, getting out of the cars, uh, out of the cars in the case of men, and getting out of the in the case of women. You women usually die when they try to, to go to the school, uh, to take care of the children in some occasion, or they are also in the in the same in the same car that is right for them. And uh, the other situation is the condition when I in my car, and uh, this can be, for instance, the, we can see that there are some cases that they have refused warnings. It's important. They are refused evacuation or they have decided to cross a river, but with a, uh, and they have not evaluated correctly the impact of the high speed of the water, and they have carried out. It means that uh, people don't estimate correctly the level of danger to which they are exposed. And they consider that they, for example, they are, and, and the last victim in Catalonia was a man that the police told him, so we cannot cross this river, it's forbidden. And the men told, okay, but I can do it. And they tried to cross, and this, it was, um, it's not a river, it's a stream near the beach. And uh, okay, the water carrying him until the sea, and, they, and he died. It's a problem, because in Mediterranean countries we have a great quantity of flash foods that produce one, two, three victims. We have found that the number of, of victims is still, is more or less stationary, but because the, the number of victims at home has decreased, uh, but has increased the number of victims due to uh, bad behaviors. Well, yeah, about economic impacts, what is the form, when, how we can estimate them? The most typical thing is to use range of dance information. This is an important problem we, when we compare Mediterranean countries, including Portugal, the south of Europe, with the north and south of Europe. Because here, in the, south, in the southern countries, there are not enough information. They are, for instance, in our case, the consortium only gives you information about the total uh, economic uh, damages that they have been compensated, but they are not the target information. And in the contrary, when we speak about German with German people, they have information about the people, about the building, all the information is completely detailed. It means that it's very difficult to do uh, com uh, works comparing damage in the south of Europe and in the center and north of Europe. And it means that the Union, the European Union, or the European Commission, don't consider the Mediterranean as important area affected by floods. And let's find that they are very, very prevalent and many floods. The typical uh, information is from insular data in some cases. There are also other works that work with evaluating replacement economic costs. There are other ones working from indirect economic costs, uh, for instance, from a DV silo. Mainly, for instance, in this case, will be in the north of Europe, in Holland and, Holland and so on, or a throw economic index that integrate different economic variables. I will speak again about this. But I, ha I want to make also another uh, reflection. It's about the increase of damages. And uh, another problem that we need to take into consideration is that the surcharge by, in our case, by the consortium and value of the audience have increased parallel. It means that we can have more damage today 
not only because there are more nutrients, more, more fats, but also because the level of life has increased and the as the exposed uh, the assets assured are also increased. They means that they pay more because there are more assets that are insurance. And this is, for instance, a, 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 a picture showing the evolution in Spain, 1971, 2008, and we can see that there are uh, not uh, a statistical significant increase. If we correct the information, having in mind the, the cost of life and having in mind this increase of assets in children. Well, there are typical figures that there are people that don't like because it, it, it seems that flats are not important or, mm -hmm. or flats are not important. No, uh, they are important, but we need to pay attention uh, to all the factors that are important. Uh, when we speak of flow, about flow of change, what is the main problem? The main problem is that we need to include all this kind of information. And this is an example of a paper that was published in Earth's Future. And in this paper, the, 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 the methodology was to compare an event that was produced in a region with another event that was produced in the same region some years before. For instance, uh, I can speak mainly about this. This was an event that was produced in 1962 in comparison with an event that was produced in 2000. And in our case, it's very optimistic. But I will explain why. Uh, but when we compare this, we need to analyze the hazard chains, the exposure chains, the vulnerability chains, and damage. And from a general, there are different points of the world, okay? And from a general point of view, it's optimistic. In reality, only in there are some countries, or this is the case of Bangladesh, in which they have detected that precipitation, uh, the increase of precipitation has affected seriously. Germany, uh, uh, they have identified that preconditions and ideological severity has increased. And Vietnam, where they have uh, identified is that, okay, that protection fires are important. But in reality, in general, uh, the exposure has mainly increased in Italy, in identification, and also the people affected. But in our case, for instance, where we are optimistic, because the event of 1962 produced more than 800 victims in two hours. It was a very catastrophic event, and obviously what we compared. But in reality, uh, the, the most important thing is this event produced in 1962 was no warning system, no risk mapping. People didn't know what to do, no evacuation. And obviously, all this thing had changed a lot. In the year 2000, a, a similar event was produced. This is a general catchment and more <coughs> very day, with the same kind of precipitation. But the main difference is that uh, they didn't affect exactly the same city. They affected the, the, the place that was near, and the number of casualties, uh, precipitation, and all in this moment. World, world was optimistic. But if we uh, analyze, for instance, only the case of Catalonia, we found that there are an increase of floods, of floods, usually flats floods. This is a picture showing the uh, evolution of flats flows from uh, one, uh, 1,900 until uh, 2010. And we can see a clear increase. What is the problem with this increase? The problem is that, one, uh, uh, the information collected, because this has been collected by information from newspapers and so on. The heterogeneity in the information is to say in the first part of the century, they don't report all the events that were produced. It's not possible to find information. This is one problem related with the heterogeneity of data. There are other questions that can are sure that are so producing. The occupation of in, uh, flood prone areas has increased a lot. In all the coast, mm -hmm. in the Mediterranean coast, uh, people is concentrating there and a bigger movement. 
from inland to the coast. And this movement is increasing day by day. And in the future, they expect that. I, I don't know if the Portugal is the same, I suppose mm -hmm. it's not the same. Yes, yeah, the same? Yes. Uh, that is the same. And it's expected that the cities will be concentrated in the coast, where flood prone areas or other risks, the tsunamis, or are, are, have minor frequency. But then it means that this increase can be related with not hazard signals on the records, but we are sure that also related with the increase of exposition of vulnerability. And the population density in plus prone areas has increased. And we have also an overall increase uh, in both total and convective precipitation. This is the mild problem in our case. When we analyze um, and the community who work with foods analyze trends in floods, what is the problem? The problem is the use, the definition of flood, what is a flood? Mm -hmm. And there are some people that consider that flood is, uh, is characterized by the return period of the change. This is one criteria. And other people consider that uh, flood uh, can be uh, identified when we have information about impacts. Uh, is, you see, this is my use one, when we have no information about this change. And this is typical. In this case, and, and here we, we are having, it's possible to have information from, from this change, but not when we are speaking about bodies, about non-permanent streams. And they, they are the kind of stream that produce the major frequency of, of, of floods. And in this occasion, we need to work with impacts. But if we try to work with rainfall, we have found that there are no trends at the moment. But in Spain, there are a total, when we speak about mm, total rainfall, there are in some regions, like mainly in the west, there are the increase. But when we speak about extreme precipitation, we have not found any trend. But what is the problem? Because the problem, my problem is that we are working with daily precipitation. And uh, in some occasions, the major part of flash floods are not related to total daily precipitation. We need to work with other scales. And in this case, in Catalonia, we have started to work with five minutes precipitation. And we have started to find that it seems in this group that they are, because, and this is the stations for, for the distribution of their points, we have started to find that it seems that an increase of convective precipitation concentrated in a less number of events. It means that uh, more uh, heavy, uh, an increase of heavy rainfalls, but local heavy rainfalls. No events like 1982 that affected all the Iberia. And at the moment, this is the only signal that we are detecting. Well, what about future scenarios? Future scenarios uh, is, a, or a, is it, uh, a decrease? Is it for 1.5 1, 1. degrees to the least to the least? Uh, in this case, we see that there are uh, decrease of precipitation, total precipitation, in all the scenarios, annual precipitation. Uh, an increase, that is, this is the most important, but it's, not, it's another kind of hazard. But in the Mediterranean countries, the most important thing is the increase of the length of the number of days without precipitation. This, this kind of index, and we, we can see, and because this will be related, all the, this fact increase the risk of having droughts, with fires, and so on. And what about maximum precipitation? When we use this, uh, 20 years return period, it is possible to see that with a scenario of 1.5, 1 1.5, we have some regions. An increase, increase, the scenario is worse, obviously, when we have a major reaction. But it's not common. It is a my, my problem that when we speak about evidence and agreement, we are not agreement, we are not in all the Iberian Peninsula. This, this, situation. And what about uh, daily runoff? This is uh, from a paper uh, that has been produced by my team. And this is 
they will write uh, annual will write off, uh, run off for a period of 20, little period of 20 years, and as an acid run off index. And we can see again that in spite that the annual run off points to the peace in all the peninsula, when we speak about the uh, 20 year record values of annual extremes, points to increase more than also in the precipitation and mainly in the northern part of the Iberian Peninsula. When we speak about the standardized final index that are decreased, because that is in the case is an annual. Is, uh, these uh, scenarios are in agreement with uh, my message of PPCC about the extremes will increase. Are in agreement. Well, uh, what is needed when we speak about future scenarios? Precipitation is not enough. It's need to add another, another uh, factors, and this is an example in which we have worked not only with seven regional climate model simulations, but also with five different socioeconomic scenarios. And uh, this is a, an example. Uh, we have analyzed the change in the mean daily precipitation uh, compared with a reference period, and we have imposed a criteria. This criteria, this is for Catalonia and Valencia, it's a work that is now, is, we are working on this. And we have found that when we have fast, fast flood events, daily precipitation, again, uh, 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 is above 40 millimeters. 40 millimeters is not so much. But we need to eliminate uh, uh, precipitation that are less than 40 millimeters. And we ha have found, because we have no information for the future, in an hourly steep. It's not useful to work with a scenarios in hourly steep. You need to work with daily steep. And you can see here for the different scenarios, 1.5 to 3, you can see here the different models. And in spite that there are models that consider that precipitation will decrease, there are other models that consider, the other ones consider that it will be an important increase. For instance, for this model, the increase changes a lot between the scenario 1.5 and 3.5 and 3.0. Uh, for this other model, uh, they are more or less the same. But the important message is that when we make the, uh, the medium value of all the scenarios, there are an increase in the uh, mean daily precipitation when, when, when we use only events above 40 millimeters. And what about population? Uh, about future population projections uh, show that we will have with the scenario S5, the major increase. This is curious, because if we remember the uh, EPCC 4, not 5, 4, they consider that the increase of population will be related with sustainable uh, behaviors, is to say they told, well, if people don't use so much energy, but they are more happy, <laughs> they have more children. Was one scenario, was, there was B, I think. And the scenario A was when we consider a technological, a very technological increase. But in this occasion, a scenario SSP5 considered an increase of technology, an increase of uh, CO2, and also an increase of population in this occasion. It's the model. And this is the example. This is the worst scenario from a point of view of good intelligence for sure. And this is the better one. This is the trace of you. It's a scenario that there is more balance. balance. And when we mix the information between uh, rainfall and population, we can find an increase in the change in the probability of <coughs> damaging events. And we can see an important increase. There are, so, there are a lot of bars that, that are related with uh, the scenario, 1.5 and 3. And it means, the percentile means that, for instance, 70% 70, 70 means that 
what is the probability that we have that an event that had produced the 70% of damage, what we consider all the series, will produce in the future. This so says we don't work with absolute values, we work with all the series of damages, and we analyze the percentiles of damages, and we say, okay, if we the 70 percentile, how will it increase in the future? And in all the cases, having in mind population increase the risk, and obviously it, uh, will, be, it will be as it will as increase when we consider a warmer period. In conclusion of this part, it is it means that floods causing multiple fatalities are gradually disappearing. We are speaking about mainly about Europe. But so Europe, if we consider the world, is different. And uh, the, in the place, or I had a number of places with further deaths per even, between further behaviors, and the main death is still that high in developing countries. Uh, plus floods. Plus floods are still increasing because, but considering uh, that people is living near yeah, the stream and they are more related with the uh, the urban planning and the uses of soils. Uh, Chains as well urbanization of crops from are, from areas and individual dangerous behaviors could increase poor fatalities. <coughs> Flood impact might increase because of increasing individual exposure. And uh, people, for instance, uh, or today people think about in technology also and, and they create a major exposition, or personal exposition. Uh, the probability to die during a flood essentially depends on physical parameters, but the speed, the rate of water, flood human interaction, and obviously the behavior of the people. Uh, it will be, and we will show in the, in the next part, uh, to take into account indexes that consider economic, socioeconomic, uh, um, and natural factors, and uh, it is needed to include, uh, to include also analysis that consider uh, change in both climate and socioeconomic and uh, economic losses. In spite of all I have explained, economic losses cause by for as the two rise worldwide in the coming decades. With this scenario, we can uh, move to the uh, Sendai family. In the Sendai framework, there are seven global targets and four priorities for action. And these four priorities for action uh, underline the understand, the risk governance that, uh, yes, and there was a poster about risk governance, the resolution for resilience, and disaster preparedness. And the other one is to the queen's reduced use. And in basis to four priorities for action, what we can propose is the question. Well, when we speak about disaster reduction, we can speak about the philosophy, about the strategy, or about the tactics. For instance, uh, the philosophy is to accept that the disaster are inevitable. Uh, to accept that risk budget policy include the concept of frequency and cost benefit are made, the recognition of the importance of non-constructive measures, integrated portfolio as a policy, sustainability in a society, democratic policy in which many stakeholders can participate, and consideration of uncertainty in risk analysis, risk management, and evaluation. This is, we can change this kind of philosophy, but this is the philosophy more or less that is the philosophy that we can find in the Sendai uh, proposal. And then this is the philosophy, the strategy will be the object of teams to complete each function and the tactics will concrete methods to execute each strategy. We will start working for oh, my presentation, which is, is based in this philosophy, and what we can act over the strategy or over the tactics. Then when we can act uh, over the strategy and we need to consider the different parts that we presented yesterday, 
their litigation, the partners response are covered. And, well, this is a complex condition of vulnerability, all of them are included in vulnerability or not, and uh, resilience are also included. Along the time, I have been, the, for instance, the word resilience was introduced after the IT earthquake. Before then, nobody uses this word. But this is the, the we can act over one of each parts of the strategy. And what are the main problems when we can start? Well, what, what are the proposals? Well, uh, potential strategies. The most typical one are a structural for protection. And then, like reflection and protection facilities, checkups, flood control, EVs, and so on. What are the problems? What are the main concerns? The first one is the cost of construction and maintenance. Here, there are people like Elena that know better than myself questions about mitigation measures, but uh, there are other constraints. Or the other constraint, the impact of ecosystems, that's great. Collateral impacts, the population displacement, cascading effects, critical infrastructure failures, and recently there are students that speak a lot about the BV effect, that safe development paradox or safety dilemma, because people consider that they are protected and the exposure increase. And that is a contrary idea of the structural flood protection. The other possibility is land use planning and other legal regulations like building codes, mandatory insurance, risk mapping. This is an example for Catalonia with a temperature period of two, five, five hundred years. What is the most important problem? The most important is not the map. The map, there are questions related with the criteria they are because the criteria, the methodology to the maps, and so on. But also, there are important problem is the difficult accessibility to hazard risk maps in spite of very publics. Because it's impossible. In our case in Catalonia, it's terrible to find where the maps are. You need because they change continuously. And it's not useful. No, it's not useful for people. There are other problems related with difficult comprehension of hazard risk maps. Uh, Problems related with urban planning and personal and public interest, the change in the piece of the soil, uh, racial systems do not follow good practices because they know that they will be fired again. Then this is a problem related with potential strategies. Um, and it's not a strategy. What other one? The other the other obviously all the strategies are meet in a more different all obviously right? The other is to improve warning systems. Warning systems depend on the hazard type. People expert on volcanic and earthquake activity know the difficulties. They are not forecasting. In the case of floods, it's not the same the forecast. The flood forecast in a big river like for us, this a big river, that when we have a flood flood. And what is the my problems? The my concerns are uh, the success. Depends on room times, the communication chain, the capacity of the people to move to a safe place. And the my concerns are related with the computational and physical modeling limits. The different criteria is another problem. For instance, in this is a comparison between Japan and Spain. But there are completely different criteria to, to uh, open a warning about heavy rainfall. But in our case in Spain, when we have different meteorological surveys and different civil protections, in the same region we have different criteria. And we can have one meteorological service that uh, send a warning and the other one that don't send. And this is a problem. And the other problem that means we will to cope with this is the uncertainty. This is a propagation of uncertainty that is important to Take in mind this. For this reason, today, meteorological services like to work with probability, but civil protection work don't, doesn't like to work with probability. They prefer to have deterministic information. But probability try to try to to solve or to introduce or to integrate this problem of uncertainties. What about non-structural measures? There are another kind of map. 
This is an example, but as you can see, this is an example for Japan, because we have not here. And although there are emergency, emergency, emergency management, emergency plans, coordination, civil protection, and other operatives. Obviously, there are emergency plans in every community, and so in Portugal, but uh, I don't know in Portugal, but I think that in Spain, you can go to your municipality and ask your, uh, to, uh, to, your uh, to your municipal administration, please give me the evacuation plan. Give me, give me the evacuation map. Mm. And they don't have an evacuation map. No, no. And this is an example in, in Japan. It's, it's, it's compulsory. When you go to a any the place, they give you an evacuation map. It's the first section. The problem that they say they have is that it's difficult to understand the evacuation map. But they have, is the on floor has a map of Kaman Railway. And this is an evacuation map of the same command, right? What we proceed with different information, and they have also this information in other languages because they know that not people don't doesn't speak a Japan, Japanese, and they have uh, also in English. And the last uh, question is whether we have this perception. For instance, we have the belief, the belief of in Japan, people are very conscientious. Uh, they are very, the, the preparedness is very good. But when we have working with Japanese people, they have told that it's not rare <coughs> this. <laughs> and they have told that uh, only more or less 28% of the people believe that there was a full risk to their house. Obviously, it's above that in Catalonia or here. But in general, the risk perception is lower than the reality. And the other problem is when we have forest nets, because people that is from outside don't know the risk in the region. For instance, they, in, in Balearic Island, there was a very serious problem with forest fires due to German people, because they didn't know the risk of forest fires with this high temperature and so on. And usually, they go to the, to the countryside, uh, and they, uh, they made a fire, a little fire, and, and, they, and they found that they, they were related with this knowledge on the, about the risk in the, in the, in the area. And this is a part from has a map, but what are the problems? The first problem is a bad memory. People don't remember what passed in the what, 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 ah, is, when uh, the one th when the radio one of the first times that radio called me on TV, they told ah you are working on natural hazards in Catalonia, but there are not any natural hazards in Catalonia. Why are you working on this? No, no, yes, there are serious problems. Uh, there are this <laughs> bad memory, false sensation of security, not enough public information, different experience by different individuals or groups with a particular society. And all of these factors are related with this risk perception. To now I'm going to conclude, uh, well, what, what, what kind of things we can apply? Well, first of all, we need to apply holistic approaches. This picture is for a, for a paper of all colleagues that are here, from Jose, from Estefania, and so on. And we need to try to find indexes, methodologies, to integrate all the factors related with floods or with other assets. This is an example uh, that of the work that they have published in 2018, where they propose the use of an integrated economic vulnerability index that includes uh, the exposure component, the sensitive component, and the resilient component. And this index was uh, applied for different municipalities. They can explain if you want afterwards. But uh, it was a, a very, they have used a finally 51 variables. It's a very good approach because they consider, uh, for, for instance, variables like the economic situations of households that is related with the citizen's capacity to cope with flash flood consequence, for instance, 
or the sensitivity related with potential job losses, or the exposure component related with the municipal infrastructure. Uh, these are, they are very good indexes. The major problem is if we can we want to apply this to all the county, to all the municipalities. I don't know how Stefania how long was to obtain this information. More or less one year. One year. This is the main problem is the access to information, but we need to move to this and to promote the facility to having this kind of information. Another uh, strategy is to include the knowledge from historical cases. The information from historical cases is useful not only for modeling, for, ba for validate models, or to improve the events that can, be, uh, can affect a region. But they are also useful uh, for risk mapping, to identify vulnerable groups and ranking circumstances in terms of dangerousness, to do educational campaigns, I mean to promote this conscientiousness, and uh, defensive behaviors, all, for all these kind of things, historical information is very useful. This is an example of cases that are recorded in Greece or Israel, for instance. And so finally, the other one is to improve the social and individual awareness. How? Uh, Using, for instance, improving obviously risk communication, education plans uh, to, uh, the, uh, to improve community resilience. How, obviously, there are one important thing that for me is the main responsible is the administration to facilitate this, but the individual responsibility is very important because they have to claim to administration to have this kind of information. For instance, in, uh, I don't know in the West, but in Catalonia, uh, information about hazards and how to act is only a gift to public schools. But non-public schools don't decide this kind of information. And there are more than 50% 50 of the students are in non-public schools. And then this needs to be changed. Another thing is to promote exhibitions. Uh, workshops, this is a workshop in which this person is showing to the people, this is a uh, uh, maqueta, uh, how uh, the influence of the different kind of soils can affect plants. This is an example. Uh, increase the people's resilience to flood, again, with more information, uh, obviously uh, avoiding dreaming, flow, flow whether it's women or for the dry. Uh, the involvement, involvement the scientific community, decision makers, emergency management organization, and individuals. And this is another example uh, in, in, a, in this case in a class. Uh, yeah, finally, it's very important uh, not uh, to include, as you said, a lot of people yesterday in system in this, no? to increase the empowerment of the population and increase the participation of the population in the formulation of vulnerability reduction strategies. This reduces the possible economic damage, increase the efficiency of this management plan, the empowerment, and the community resilience. And this, there are two examples. This is an example in a reunion between policy makers and representatives of tourism. Uh, Activities. And this is another example in, in this case is in which we're working relating natural risk with uh, the goals of development. And it's very interesting to see that people didn't know anything. Ah, oh, this is new for them. A lot of things, no? But they act. And nowadays, the use of new technologies, the use of social media, no social network, mobile phones are useful not only for warning, saving life, alert people about dangerous situations related to flood, but they are useful also for citizen science. In this moment, there are different projects working with the floods and citizen science. This is an example. 
in the product project, so the uh, Spanish project, uh, in which uh, we have developed a model platform, uh, and people has to send pictures, has to send observations, and the platform inclu includes information about what do, uh, what is a flood, what is a landslide, and so on, what to do and what not to do, and people collaborate sending information in order to create maps of floods or to identify bad uh, practices or good practices. And this is for us, this is very important, the involvement of the population. In conclusion, uh, what are, there are a lot of reasons, but if we sell it, then what are the messages to take home? Well, first of all, uh, it is not possible to guarantee complete safety. We need to consider that we live with risks, and it's not possible to avoid it. And it's not, no, not necessary, we cannot uh, avoid it. And the second one uh, is that we need to work with an integrated and holistic point of view approach. Working together, in the past, meteorologists work in a place, geologists in another one, geologists in another one, Nowadays, it's need to, to mix together, to, to collaborate together uh, in interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity activity. Well, risk maps obviously is a transition tool for land use planning and also for evacuation. Uh, they, it would be necessary to relate more with land use regulation, with insurance, with warnings. Uh, it's important to have uh, historical information to awake the memory of the people and uh, to model. Uh, risk reduction is not only as an estatal question, not only a, a, a regional. It is need that local government uh, works with this business reduction. And this is a main problem because usually municipalities are not interested in working on like this. And it's need uh, to have a major cooperation with, with municipalities and state organizations uh, is obviously is needed to improve communication to all the steps of the chains between the first starting from the knowledge about the risk, but when we speak about a warning, it's needed to improve the first warning when meteorological warning is done until what to do now. Coming warnings on risk management programs uh, is very, very important. Uh, Self protection skills, more information on risk, easy to understand, evacuation maps, protocols, and different language. For instance, another example is Barcelona is considered an example, exemplar city in the world about floods, defects. It's an example. It has been selected of one. Uh, because the, uh, the city has a very high evaluation because the infrastructural part of Barcelona is very good. We have tanks for rifle, a uh, very good system to, to, to evacuate water and so on. And it's need to improve a uh, still that. But people don't know that Barcelona doesn't arrive to the standards to communicate to people. Because of <coughs> and the last one is citizen participation, new technologies and education campaigns are uh, important. Now today is uh, to promote natural resources and defense behaviors are a key factor. And it's important to target to different vulnerable groups because they are completely, it's not the same, uh, the typical imprudent behavior uh, that people that are disabled, that uh, children, that mother that go to, to the school to take care of the children and so on. Then thank you very much for your attention. And I have put here the sustainable development goals because risk is related with all of them. Then it's a trans, uh, uh, transdisciplinary matter. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.